We're looking at Psalm 19, and we're looking at God's revelation to us, both in a general sense and specifically through his word. And now we are in verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. It's always important for us to approach the word of God with the right attitude. And it's, it's great to know that God is speaking to us through general revelation. It's even great to know that God is speaking to us through his word. But how do we respond to God's word? What is God's word to us? And here God's word is called the fear of the Lord. And that is talking about the weight of God's word in our lives and the reverence we give to God's word. Because if we don't have reverence for God's word, then all that he reveals to us, as fantastic as they are, as precise as they are, will be of no benefit to us. So the word of God has to be approached with fear. And this is not the kind of fear of, of running away from something or avoiding something. But this is the fear of carefully observing and taking note of something and respecting what the thing is. And so we don't run from God's word. We run to God's word, but we run with reverence. So when God gives us an instruction, we don't treat it casually and we don't throw it out of the way. You know, as our world becomes more and more modernized, as, as people become modernized, Christians become modernized, we become used to multiple voices and, and expressing our own views and our own thoughts. Uh, democracy becomes our practice. Sometimes we forget God and we bring God into the mix. And we think, well, God says it, I can also say what I want. And, and although God encourages us to speak our mind, there is an authority with which he speaks that we must submit to. And that is the reverence we have for the word of God. Don't allow the way you speak to other people to become the basis of your relationship with God. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. It's clean fear, not a morbid fear, clean fear. And it is a fear we must have all the time. And then it talks about God's word as God's judgments. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. You know, God's judgment is how he rules a situation. In the Bible, apart from having the written word of God, many times people would take something to God and say, Lord, what do you think about this? We want to do this. Uh, should we do it? Should we go to war? Should we not go to war? Is it the right thing to do? Is it not the right thing to do? And, and God will pronounce his judgment on the situation. So the word of God also evaluates what we are doing and tells us the will of God. And it says that when God gives us his word and gives us direction and pronounces on something we are doing, that judgment is true and righteous altogether. Uh, so it's just like going to a, a, a law court. I mean, after judgment is made, uh, the judgment is supposed to be upheld. And so God's judgment higher than any human judgment, is upheld in our lives. In every situation of our lives, God's word is the final arbiter, the final judgment, the final say. And when he says it, that's it. It's righteous altogether, and he's always true. He never lies, and he never tells us something that is not right. So the word of God is presented to us in many ways. It's the fear of the Lord as well as the judgment of the Lord. And I pray that we will apply reverence in our appreciation of God's word and we will accept his word as the final determination of everything in our lives. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, your judgments are true and righteous. You always do what is right for me in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mensah Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.